June of 2007, page 4. Question number 17. Copper wire of length L, cross-sectional area A, has resistance R. All right, this is a proportionality question, no actual numbers. So let's go find the formula that deals with uh, resistance. And there it is. Resistance is equal to resistivity times the length divided by the cross-sectional area. So we write that formula down. R equals rho L over A. And so length L, cross-sectional area A, and resistance is R. A second copper wire at the same temperature. So the material is the same, so we don't have to worry about that. So now we have to find out it's 2L divided by half of A. So 0.5A. Well, twice the length doubles it. Half of the resistance is going to double it again. So I'm going to go with 4R. Twice as long, more resistance. Skinnier, more resistance. And there it is. Question 18. There's a 6 ohm lamp that requires 0.25 amps to current to operate. Which circuit below would the lamp operate correctly when the switch S is closed? Well, let's look at all of them. Well, here the lamp is already operating. If I close the switch, I short the circuit out, the lamp goes out. So that's not operating properly. Here we've got the battery is separated by the switch, so when I were to close the switch, basically I would have this circuit and this circuit again. Again, it's the battery would be shorted out and the light bulb would not function properly. The third circuit, well right now the light bulb is working. And when I close the switch, I short out the battery, the light bulb goes out. So by process elimination, it's going to be this one, and that's the way I'm guessing it's going to be. There's the voltage. It's not going to the light bulb. We close the switch. It goes to the light bulb. It functions properly. Correct answer? Four. Question 19. What is the total current in a circuit consisting of six operating 100-watt light bulbs? So the power is 100 watts. Power equals voltage times current. I want to know the total current for uh, six of them in parallel. Well, let's do the current of one of them functioning. So I got 120 volts running through a light bulb. It's 100 watts. Uh, the current would be power divided by voltage. So 100 watts divided by 120 volts gives me a current of about, uh, I don't know, 0.8 something amps. And then I multiply that by six of them. So that would be a total current of about 5 amps. Question 20. There's a 4.5 volt personal stereo. So the voltage is 4.5 volts. It uses 1950 joules of electrical energy. Now I can't remember electrical energy, so I go look up on my formula sheet on the right-hand side until I find... Uh, Electrical power. Oh, look, here it is. The work it does is defined as electrical energy. So I'm looking for W. And so I'm going to go find some formulas with W in it, and there they are. So I'm looking for W. No, I'm given W. It's uh, 1950. And uh, hour. So I'm given time. And ready? I'm going to call that 3,600 seconds right off the bat because I'm going to be dealing with seconds, 60 minutes times 60 seconds is 3,600 seconds. What is the electrical resistance? So I'm looking for electrical resistance. So I want a formula with voltage, electrical energy, time, and resistance. So I go to that group, and power and time, voltage, here we go. Voltage squared T over R with that. So W equals V squared T over R. And what am I looking for? Looking for resistance. So I have to do algebra. I multiply both sides by R just because I hate divided by. WR is equal to V squared T. V squared divided by, uh, V squared T divided by W should give me my R. So I gotta go get my calculator out and plug in numbers and see what it turns into. 
I get 37.38 and uh, 37.4 ohms. So there's my answer. Question 21 is in waves. Is yellow light travels from zircon into diamond the speed of the light? So I need the formula for the speed of light in a material. And that gets me right here. The index of refraction of the material is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in the material. So let's write that down. N is equal to C divided by V. And V is equal to C. And so V is equal to C divided by N. So the velocity is a function of the speed of light in a vacuum divided by the index refraction. So let's go look up the index refraction for zircon and for diamond. Now we're told they're using yellow light. The reason that is is because the index refraction is different for different frequencies of light, dispersion. And so they got to remind us that we're using the particular frequency of light that our chart is rated for. So we go find diamond. Diamond is 2.42. Zircon is 1.92. So if I'm going from 1.9 to 2 point something, then the speed will have to, bigger number here, smaller number here, the speed will decrease. Travels from zircon to diamond, the speed of the light will decrease. Question 22, the diagram represents a transverse wave. Transverse wave goes below and above some rest position. The distance between two points identifies the amplitude. Well, amplitude is the energy, or how high above or how far below the rest position it falls. So this would be an amplitude, and this would be an amplitude. So let's see, D to A would be an amplitude, A to E would be an amplitude. A to B, that's half a wavelength. A to C, that's a complete wavelength. A to E, there's our amplitude, and D to E, D to E is the total height of the wave, not an amplitude. Okay, so A to E is the correct answer. That would be defined as an amplitude. Question 23. The diagram below represents a periodic wave. Starts and goes back and forth. Which point on the wave is in phase with point P? Well, in phase refers to being 360 degrees out of phase. So if we started here at zero, that would be 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and then back up to 360 degrees. And then we're starting all over again. So point C would be in phase with point P, exactly one wavelength apart. So I'm looking for choice C, and there it is, choice C.